Hi there. Welcome to my video on magnetic anomalies and plate reconstructions. Understanding the motion of tectonic plates through Earth history is incredibly important. It's important for almost every aspect of Earth science. One of the biggest applications is that understanding those past plate motions helps us to understand how tectonic collisions came to happen and better interpret them. It also helps us to better interpret ancient sedimentary environments. A lot of the most interesting sedimentary records from Earth are deposited along the margins of continents in shallow water. And so we need to understand, was that in the poles or was that near the equator? Where was sediment coming from? One continent or two continents? So having these plate reconstructions really helps interpret the sedimentary record of Earth. It also helps us understand Earth's energy budget. You might know that Earth is essentially a big reflector, reflecting most of the sun's energy back into outer space. And the, the ability and the systematics with which it reflects solar energy largely depends on where the continental land masses are located versus where the more reflective ocean water or ice is located. So as these continents move around over time, that essentially changes the distribution of incoming solar energy to Earth. And finally, as a key part of the Earth atmosphere system, the distribution of continents can have a profound impact on the cycling of atmospheric gases. So it's important. And luckily, we know a lot about how plates have moved around over time. For example, let me show you this quick video that shows a reconstruction over the last 200 million years. And we're running backwards in time here. So here's 20 million years, 30 million years, 40 million years. You can see that we're essentially closing the Atlantic Ocean. Here comes India, now moving away from Asia very quickly. And by around uh, 120 million years, you'll see the South Atlantic is entirely closed, or that's when it started to open. And by around 180 million years, you'll see the the North Atlantic is totally closed. This is now the supercontinent Pangaea, as it looked about 200 million years ago, just before the opening of the Atlantic and also the collision of India with Asia. So you can see there's a lot of information in this plate reconstruction. So in this video, I want to take a minute and talk to you about the main way that we're able to reconstruct these plate motions. And the main method we have is the observation of seafloor magnetics, which gets us a really good reconstruction back to about 180 million years ago. So I'll first talk to you about how that was figured out by early scientists in the 1950s and 60s. Then I'll show you the magnetic time scale. And then I'll finish with a few slides on spreading rates and plate reconstructions. So if we put ourselves back in the pre-plate tectonics era, the 1950s and the early 1960s, scientists were gathering a huge amount of geophysical data about the ocean floor. And one of the things they were doing was collecting profiles of magnetic orientation of the seafloor. And here's an example of that from one of the most famous profiles, the l 10 and 19 survey across the East Pacific Rise in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So here's the ship track in red, and here's what its magnetometer recorded. These amazing oscillations back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all along the profile. Scientists were really, really puzzled about what could be causing these magnetic oscillations um, along perpendicular path from the spreading ridges. As those profiles gave way to maps, it became clear that those magnetic oscillations actually were magnetic stripes, which were broadly symmetric on either side of mid-ocean spreading ridges. So this stripe corresponds to this stripe, this stripe to this stripe. And eventually, this was interpreted and scientists realized that these magnetic stripes were actually recording seafloor spreading at mid-ocean ridges. 
And so let's look at how that works. The first thing to know is that Earth's magnetic field is a dipole. Today, if you have a compass needle, it essentially points to the north. But at times in the past, your compass needle would have pointed actually to the south pole. And over the last hundreds of millions of years, Earth's magnetic field has reversed itself hundreds of times. It literally flip-flops, and north becomes south, and south becomes north. And we call these periods crons. A normal cron is what we're in today, where your compass points north, and a reverse cron is the opposite. As it turns out, at mid-ocean spreading ridges, as magma starts to cool and ocean crust is created, certain minerals within the basaltic ocean crust actually lock in the magnetic declination and inclination. Minerals like magnetite, for example, essentially record a magnetic compass needle in their crystal structure that points north. So as new ocean crust is created, and remember that it's created symmetrically on both sides of the spreading ridge, okay, it acts as a tape recorder of magnetic reversals. So at one point uh, in time, it might be recording a normal polarity where compass points north, that's shown as white, and then at a later point in time, your compass needle may point to the south, and it's going to record that reversed polarity for some period of time. So it's essentially acting as a tape recorder. Here's a good example of what that looks like in an animated form over the last two million years. Here, so here comes our first reversal, and it's going to switch now back to normal, or back to normal now, you can see switching from reverse to normal polarity is recorded by freshly cooled rock at those mid-ocean ridges. So that's great. We have magnetic stripes on the seafloor that act as a barcode. But to convert those into actual spreading rates, we need to know the magnetic time scale. Essentially, we need to know when those magnetic reversals from normal to reversed have occurred. And so scientists during the 1960s constructed a magnetic time scale for Earth history. And what they did for the most part is went out and used potassium argon dating of stacked lava flows to get the age of the lava flows and then simultaneously measured the magnetic orientation that was recorded by those basalts. And they were able to build up a record over time of normal, reversed, normal crons. And so because we know the age of each of these crons, we can now compare this to the seafloor and apply a time scale to those magnetic stripes on the seafloor. So here's an example of the modern magnetic time scale. So here's 0 million years going down to 45, 45 down to 80, and so on back in time. And you can see each of these black and white bars represents a normal if it's black or a reversed cron if it's white. And so what this means is that any place we can measure the record of magnetism over time, we can then actually know the age of that rock. And this, of course, brings us back to the seafloor. Remember this magnetic profile that was originally surveyed by the L10 and 19 mission. Scientists are able to match up these periods of normal and reversed magnetic polarity with the magnetic time scale. And we're now able to show that this point on the ocean floor is actually a reversal that happened at 4.1 million years and we now know the age of that piece of seafloor, and we know the age of the entire transect. So how do we now convert this into spreading rates and then into plate reconstructions? Well, you may know that a spreading rate is literally, any rate is just distance over time, okay? 
So when we think about the seafloor, what we can do is literally measure the distance perpendicular to the spreading ridge, okay? And that's how much, how far apart the plates moved. Essentially, one million years ago, this point and this point were together. They were both at the mid-ocean ridge. Thus, we've had a full 10 kilometers of relative motion over the last 1 million years. So that gives us a spreading rate of 10 kilometers per million years. So we know the rate, and we also know the direction of motion. Because we know that new ocean crust is always created basically in strips parallel to the spreading ridge. And we know then that new crust always moves perpendicular away from the spreading ridge. So we now know both the direction of motion and the spreading rate of these two plates. And of course, keep in mind, a spreading ridge is always a plate boundary. So in this example, this might be South America and this might be Africa. So we now know the relative motion and the rate between these two tectonic plates. So, over the, in, the last 50 years, scientists have filled in this picture of magnetic anomalies on the seafloor and have assigned ages to every point of Earth's seafloor. Here that is. Red is zero at the mid-ocean ridges, and the purples are around 180 million years, some of the oldest seafloor on the surface of the Earth. So, because we know the age, and we, we know the directions in which this crust was created, we can now use it to actually reconstruct plate motions, run everything in reverse, basically, and close up these ocean basins. And here's a little example of an animation by Tanya Atwater that does just that. And this shows you how, the tecton how magnetic anomalies allowed us to figure out the tectonic history of the Eastern Pacific Ocean over the last 80 million years. So I'm gonna play this a few times, and what I want you to watch for is this Kula plate is actually gonna disappear entirely. This Nazca plate is gonna be partially subducted, and actually this mid-ocean ridge is gonna be subducted under the west coast of California, and it's gonna split the Nazca into two parts. Here we go. So here comes the seafloor spreading, new crust created at the ridges here. The Kula plate's about to disappear under Alaska, it's gone. Mid-ocean ridge gets subducted under California. And we now have split the Nazca into what is now the Nazca and this little plate here called the Juan de Fuca. So let's watch this one more time. So spreading here but the whole ridge itself is actually moving towards the coast of California. The ridge is subducted. That creates the Juan de Fuca plate. This is the Mendocino Triple Junction. This is now the San Andreas Fault. So we're able to reconstruct all of those motions literally by running seafloor spreading in reverse, essentially. So in summary, Earth's magnetic field has rever reverses polarity on about 100,000 year timescales, 100,000 to million year timescales. Um, it's done it many times. Ocean crust records the magnetic field of Earth as that new basaltic rock cools. As the basaltic rock moves away from a spreading center, it essentially records magnetic stripes on the seafloor parallel to the spreading ridge. If we can measure those stripes along the seafloor and match them up to a magnetic time scale, that allows us to convert into spreading rates. And knowing those spreading rates and the spreading directions lets us reconstruct plate motions with a high degree of accuracy over the last 180 million years. Thanks so much for listening. I'll leave you with this concept question and see you in class.